Hi, and welcome to Reviewing with Mrs. Wages. Today's topic is photosynthesis, the big picture. Most people think of plants when it comes to photosynthesis, but many types of organisms, like these simple bacteria cells and these algae, are photosynthetic. But for this explanation, let's just stick to plants. So consider this potted plant. Now zoom into just one leaf. Now go deep into the leaf's tissue. And the tissue, of course, is just a bunch of cells, so zoom into a cell. And finally, in this plant cell, consider one single chloroplast. The magic of photosynthesis happens right here in the chloroplast of plant cells. And if you look closely at the single chloroplast, you'll see a complex system of membranes, discs, and fluid. So before trying to understand the process of photosynthesis, it's important to consider the structure of a chloroplast. So let's take a look. There are three important parts found inside of a chloroplast. The first is a thylakoid. This is a thin, round disc, kind of like a Green Girl Scout cookie, that forms stacks known as grana. A single stack is known as a granum, and surrounding the grana is a thick liquid called stroma. That's it, thylakoid grana stroma. And now that you have an understanding of chloroplast structure, let's get back to photosynthesis. Here's that familiar equation for photosynthesis. 6CO2 plus 6H2O gets turned into C6H12O6 plus 6O2. So how does this reaction occur? It actually happens over many separate steps in different parts of the chloroplast. Some reactions occur in the thylakoid membranes, while others occur in the stroma. And even though the equation might seem fairly simple, the process of photosynthesis is composed of two separate and complex stages. The first stage of photosynthesis is called the light-dependent reactions, or the light reactions. These reactions take place in the thylakoid membranes. The second stage is called the Calvin cycle. It's also been called the light-independent reactions because light is not necessary for these reactions to occur. They occur throughout the stroma surrounding the thylakoid membrane. Let's consider the big picture of just the light reactions first. The light-dependent reactions are just that dependent on light, and they can't happen without it. It's here where chlorophyll absorbs solar energy, and plants use the water they absorb through their roots. In these reactions, oxygen gas that we enjoy breathing is also created. All of this happens in the thylakoid membranes. Now let's consider the big picture of the Calvin cycle. The Calvin cycle uses the carbon dioxide that we animals exhale, and produces the plant's food. Think of it as a glucose factory. This chemical factory manufactures glucose in the liquidy stroma that fills the chloroplast. At first glance, it might seem that the basic equation is all there is to photosynthesis. But what the equation does not show is the exchange of fuel molecules between the light reactions and the Calvin cycle. And while making oxygen gas seems very important, especially to us, the light reactions do more than that. The purpose of the light reactions is to provide energy in the form of fuel molecules for the Calvin cycle. Through a series of chemical reactions, the light-dependent reactions make ATP and NADPH for the Calvin cycle. This step begins the conversion of solar energy into chemical energy. The chemical energy that is temporarily stored in both ATP and NADPH is used to drive the production of glucose out in the stroma. Recall that ATP stores energy in and releases energy from the bonds between the phosphates. It's kind of like a rechargeable battery. The light reactions use solar energy to charge up the molecule, and the Calvin cycle uses the energy to make glucose. Then the phosphate and the ADP return to the light-dependent reactions to get recharged. NADP positive is another energy-carrying molecule. It transports energy in the form of two electrons and one hydrogen ion from the light-dependent reactions to the Calvin cycle. You can think of NADP positive as an empty pan into which you would place hot coals and hydrogen to transport them more easily. The light reactions attach the two electrons and the hydrogen to NADP positive, forming NADPH. This then travels to the Calvin cycle in the stroma. Like ATP, the energy from NADPH is released in the Calvin cycle in order to form glucose. NADP positive then returns empty-handed to the light-dependent reactions to get recharged. So what the original equation for photosynthesis does not show is the exchange of energy molecules between the light-dependent reactions and the Calvin cycle. 
When you put it all together, it looks something like this. The light reactions are using sun and water to build ATP, NADPH, and oxygen. ATP and NADPH are the then fuel for the Calvin cycle to produce glucose when CO2 is available. And ADP and NADP positive return to the light reactions to get all charged up again. Here's a somewhat less confusing diagram of the same information. Pause the video and try to trace the chemical reaction of photosynthesis and the cycling of the few molecules. Note the location of all the reactions as well. In summary, photosynthesis occurs in the chloroplast of plant cells. Different stages happen in different locations inside the chloroplast. The light-dependent reactions, which build fuel for the Calvin cycle, happen in the thylakoid membranes. The Calvin cycle, which produces sugar, like glucose, occurs in the stroma. In order to build the fuel molecules like ATP and NADPH, the thylakoids have to absorb solar energy and take in water. In the process, they will also produce oxygen gas. And finally, the Calvin cycle builds glucose using a steady supply of ATP and NADPH and carbon dioxide. When the fuel molecules have been depleted of their energy, they return to the light-dependent reactions to get recharged. That's all for now. I hope this helps. And as always, happy studying!